Hey everyone, welcome to the first video of section 7.7. .7. So in this section, we're jumping back to something that's a little more, it feels more abstract, a little more theoretical, but it turns out in the end that you're going to end up using this to solve non-homogeneous problems. So we need this idea of fundamental matrices to talk a little bit more about non-homogeneous problems and how do we go about solving them. Also, if in the future you take like physics type classes and they talk about like semi-group operators or they do like the exponential of a differential operator, this is the sort of thing they're talking about here, is this, sort of, is this section here. So we're going to be talking about sort of these different tools that can be used to analyze problems in different ways and then see at the end how we can apply them to the current operators we're looking at. So let's go ahead and just jump on into it and I can start actually writing down things that I'm vaguely talking about now. Right, so section 7.7 .7, we're going to look at, in this case we're going to look at general n by n systems, n by n function systems, just because it makes it, we might as well talk about that way if we're going to talk in this generality. So we're looking to solve something that looks like x prime equals p of t times x. So p can be non-constant this time. And we have n equations. So x is a vector x1, x2 up to xn. Now we're going to take a fundamental set of solutions for this operator. So we talked about this in sections in the earlier section when we were talking about theory, we talked about fundamental sets of solutions. So assume x1 up through xn form a fundamental set of solutions for this equation. Equation. Then before, when we took the round scheme, how do we do that? We took the round scheme by stacking all that, these guys into, the, into a matrix and then taking a determinant. Now we're going to set the matrix again. So let x of t be that matrix of all of them stacked together. So it's going to be x1 in the first column, x2 in the second, and xn in the last, which like before, this is x1 function 1 in the first spot, x1 function n in the last spot, over to xn function 1 in the first spot, xn function n in the last spot. Now the book uses the Greek letter Psi for this. I'm going to use X, I used X before talking about this. Then X is called a fundamental matrix for this problem. For X prime equals P of T X. Now since we said these guys were a fundamental set, that means the Ronskian or the determinant of this is not zero. By fundamental set, the determinant of X is not zero, so x is invertible. We're going to use that in a second. So what we want to look at now is how we go about writing general solutions and solving problems. So if these guys form a fundamental set, then what I get is the general solution to x prime equals p of t x is x of t equals c1 x1 of t plus c2 x2 of t plus plus cn xn of t. Well now let's break this up into its component functions. So I get that x1 of t, where x is my solution function, equals c1 x1 1 of t plus c2 x2 1 of t plus plus cn xn 1 of t on down to xn of t equals c1 x1n of t plus c2 x2n of t plus plus cn xn n of t. And if you look at this long enough, you'll see this looks a lot like matrix multiplication. And it turns out it is. It ends up, we end up being able to say that this x of t vector is equal to multiplying my matrix capital X of t times a vector c, where c is the vector c1 up through cn. This is exactly how this pans out, this is exactly what this looks like. Now, what does this say for being able to meet initial conditions? Now, say I want to sit, have that x vector of t0 equals an x0 vector. So x0 is model my initial conditions. Well, I can take this equation above and plug in t0 to both sides. So x0 vector equals my function x at t0, which equals now my matrix x, which I have defined above in terms of these solutions, at t0 times the vector c. Now remember what we said at the beginning of this video, or near the beginning of this video, this x matrix is invertible. So I can invert it to the other side. 
And if I invert it, I get that I get my constant C according to X T0 inverse times X0 vector. Now this is more of a theoretical result here. To find the C's normally, you would just plug in and solve this system of equations. But theoretically, I can solve it out this way. If I knew X T0 inverse, I could just do it this way and I'd be done. And to make this look a little better, I can look for a special fundamental matrix. So if I find solutions so that x1, my, ve my solution x1 at t0 is the matrix, is the vector 1, 0, 0, just a 1 in the first spot, x2 at t0 has just a 1 in the second spot, and so on until x n of t0 has just a 1 in the last spot, then my matrix x at t0 is the identity matrix because it's 1 along the main diagonal and 0 everywhere else, which means x0 inverse is the identity. And in this particular case, we're going to use a different letter for this matrix. This, letter, this matrix here is going to be capital Phi at t0. We're going to call this, the matrix we get from plugging in these particular solutions is going to be this capital Phi, just to distinguish from the other ones. Well, then what do I have? Then I know that my solution can be written x of t equals capital Phi of t times some vector of constant c. And if I want x of t0 to be x0, then I get that x0 equals x of t0, which equals phi of t0 times c. But phi of t0 is the identity. So this is just c, which means my constant is just x0. So I get my solution just by x of t equals phi of t times x0. So if you can find a matrix phi, then it's really, really easy to solve for initial conditions. You just multiply that matrix phi by the initial conditions, and that solves it for all t. Now, in general, this phi is harder to solve for, but it makes solving the problem with multiple initial conditions really easy. So in general, in this section, when we talk about specific fundamental industries, I'll use phi for this one and just use capital X for any other ones. The book will use capital phi. I'll use capital X to use the same notation we used before for the Ronskian sort of stuff. So I'm going to give you a problem to work on for this. I want you to find a fundamental matrix, which means it doesn't have to be this fancy one with the ones and the zeros. It can be whatever it wants, but just find a fundamental matrix for a system that you know how to solve because when we've done already, it's a constant coefficient one. So I put that problem up for you right now. So here is a constant coefficient ODE system that you know how to solve. We've done it before in the last couple sections. And I want you to find a fundamental matrix for this. You don't have to do the fancy fee one, just any one you want. Find solutions, put them in a, put them in a matrix, that kind of thing. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, in the next one, we're going to go into another sort of tangent -y thing about matrices. Um, and that's going to end up wrapping around the thing we just talked about today. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.